Black Panther is arguably Marvel's best film to date. From the MCU's first non-white lead to incredible cinematography, great soundtrack, heartwarming storyline, and phenomenal acting, it was historic in so many ways. And it was an unprecedented global hit. No, really, everybody across the globe was going around saying Wakanda forever. So in today's video, we're talking about how Black Panther created unrealistic expectations for future MCU movies at the box office. Let's get started. First off, how did Black Panther Panther do at the box office. The MCU created one of the biggest success stories in its cinematic history, perhaps the biggest with the release of Black Panther just over three years ago. It quickly became Marvel's flagship hero, and honestly, what's not to love about it? Black Panther was played to perfection by the great Chadwick Boseman. He was supported by a wonderful cast and crew, and led by director Ryan Coogler. All along, there was only one destiny for the film, the greatest of all time. Before the release of this film, Marvel had made 17 superhero movies. Of course, all those films had a white and male lead with a predominantly white cast, so Black Panther was already different. Anybody could feel it before it ever came out. And when it did, Black Panther made history. It ended up making $1.3 billion worldwide. At the time, no other Marvel movie had done so. Avengers Infinity War crossed $2 billion overall a few months later. Domestically, Black Panther made $700 million, which was bigger than that of Infinity War, which came up to $678 million. These numbers made it the most successful Marvel film in the United States, and it was also the highest grossing film in the country that year, MCU or otherwise. A while later, it became the top grossing superhero movie of all time in the U.S. So how was Black Panther such a hit, and what precedent did it set? Black Panther's success was a huge feat if you think about the movies Marvel had released until then. The list included Iron Man, Captain America Winter Soldier, and four other Avengers films. For Marvel, Black Panther was a relative overperformance. They weren't used to numbers like that. It'll alone outgrossed the first three out of four Avengers films in North America. Like, come on, how is that even possible? We had so many solo movies with superheroes. Why was Black Panther special? Well, until that point, the MCU had unsaid myths about how black films won't appeal to the general audience. It was assumed that white people won't go to watch non-white films. And of course, the movie would be a flop. Black Panther proved that this wasn't the truth at all. In fact, it could do better than any of those predominantly white films. It had the numbers to back it up. That's not to say that films with black people couldn't flop. They very much could, but it was something nobody ever said about white films. We all remember that Amazing Spider-Man 2 was a disaster, right? But did it ever, even for a second, question the future of Spider-Man movies? Absolutely not. Also, it was ridiculous to say that black films wouldn't travel when Moonlight was a hit on a global level, and so was Get Out. Ironically, a film about racist white people. Still, those were considered lucky exceptions. So when Marvel finally made a film about a black superhero with a predominant dominantly black cast, the film faced an unavoidable and completely unfair challenge. It had to succeed at the box office. Otherwise, it would give traction to the notion that black films couldn't achieve global success. If Black Panther had failed, it would have been the very example studio executives would have used to shut down any future movies with black leads. Instead, the film showed that there were stories to be told about non-white people, and there was an audience for it, a bigger one than that of movies with the same old white lead. Now, how have other Marvel movies performed at the box office. Captain Marvel was the MCU's first female lead superhero film, which also shouldn't have been a success because who wants to see women as leads, right? But when it came out, people were shocked that it made it big. Who would have thought, except for Black Panther and Captain Marvel, the biggest MCU movies at the box office, excluding Superman and Iron Man films, were Thor Ragnarok with $854 million and The Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 with $869 million, both in 2017. Before that, the top MCU earners were Captain America the Winter Soldier with $714 million in 2014 and the Guardians of the Galaxy with $773 million the same year. Clearly, none of these are even close to the success of Black Panther, so it set the bar too high for any MCU movies to come after it. It was monumental. Before Black Panther, $650 to $850 million was considered great for a Marvel movie, but anything that's come out after the film has been compared to its success and numbers, although not many have managed to live up to it. And that's all about how Black Panther created unrealistic expectations for future MCU films. Now let's move on to some other related news. First off, how's Thor Love and Thunder doing at the box office? It was another blowout week for Thor Love and Thunder, as it brought in $46 million in its second weekend. That brings its total up to $233 million in the domestic market and $498 million worldwide. Sounds great, right? Yes, but it's not all good news for the MCU's 29th film. With these numbers, it requires 
records a 68% drop from the first week, and it's one of the steepest falls the franchise has ever seen. For some context, Thor Ragnarok had a second weekend drop of 53.5%. Still, it's not all bad for the new Taika Waititi film. Its 10-day run is still the biggest yet for any solo God of Thunder flick, but the mixed reviews coming in are definitely hurting it at the box office. Next up, Eternals might be getting a sequel. According to a new Marvel Studios leak, Eternals is reportedly getting a follow-up film. The leak said that the film was on track, although without Chloe Zhao attached as director. This comes as a bit of a shock to fans and critics alike, as Eternals was the lowest-ranked Marvel film of all time. Nobody thought it would come back. But hey, maybe it'll make up for the first one. Also, that cast was phenomenal. We don't mind seeing Richard Madden again. And if Angelina Jolie signs up for the next part too, well, we'll be there opening night. Moving on, what do Marvel actors think about Thor Love and Thunder? We don't know about you guys, but we simply adore the new Taika Waititi film. It was wholesome, funny, wonderful, and it had lots of Chris Hemsworth, as expected, of course, but we still love to see it. And we're not alone in those feelings. Most Marvel stars have been raving about it too. Vincent D'Onofrio, who plays Kingpin on the show Daredevil, tweeted that he loved the film. Leah McHugh from The Eternals posted on Instagram that she had a spectacular night, as always, watching another Marvel movie that was a must-see. Sochi Gomez from Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness posted that the film was absolutely bonkers, and she loved it. She said she was still freaking out about it. Kate Heron, who directed the first season of Loki, also shared her feelings about the new film. She said she didn't want to give away any spoilers, but it was so much fun. She exclaimed that she laughed and cried and then laughed again while watching it. Even Chris Pratt gave Love and Thunder his approval. He shared on Instagram that he was forever grateful that he got to be a part of it, and he shouted out Chris Hemsworth for being excellent in the film. He said nobody else on this planet was more fit to play the titular role, and boy, don't we all know it. And finally, several cameos were cut from Thor Love and Thunder. Both Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and Spider-Man No Way Home had an abundance of cameos in the film, and we all loved them, didn't we? So we all expected to see a few in Thor Love and Thunder, but sadly, they were cut out. Although, we did get to see the actor's kids in the film, including Chris Hemsworth's. Still, some were left out, including Peter Dinklage's appearance as Eitri, who helped Thor create Stormbreaker in Avengers Infinity War, and Jeff Goldblum, who was supposed to return as Grandmaster. Even Lena Headey was confirmed to shoot a cameo, but it never made it to the final cut. And according to Taika Waititi, it's for the best. He said those scenes didn't make it to our screens because they weren't good enough, and that's why they were left out. Ouch! Sounds kind of harsh, but we trust you, Taika, if you say so. And that's a wrap for this video. Are you looking forward to Black Panther Wakanda Forever? Do you think it'll manage to live up to the expectations set by the first film? Let us know in the comments below. And make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.